All right, we are live. Hey, everybody. Oh, oh my gosh, it is a big night. It's a big night. We all know why it is a big night and we are so pumped. What are you guys thinking right now? What are you thinking? Tell me what your thoughts are. I think everybody's about to go ape shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, yeah, okay. so we're very excited. Oh, wait, what's up, Alicia? No, I'm okay. I'm on like my second glass of wine. I like pre-gamed a little bit before this because I was a little bit concerned. Me too. You know, so I, I'm good. I'm good. I'm really excited. I have a, a lot of just questions for her because I feel like, you know, last time when she just popped in and now I'm like, okay, I'm ready. I have like yeah. my, my <laughs> like, real questions ready. I like did my research. I'm like, Whew, here we go. Ready to go. Yeah. Got my pen and my paper. Right. I have like my, gonna be my hard hitting questions. Like right. tattoos, hot or not. You know? <laughs> these, are my, these are my hard hitting questions, you know? So I'm ready. We're ready to be live journal journalists here. We're ready to go like take it to the next level for reporting. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> He's loving your um your board. Thank you. <laughs> so as we kind of wait for our special guest, I want to know you guys, okay, so um, what do you guys want to ask her? What are some of the things? I know you guys got questions. Yeah, now yeah, if you have to ask them, guys. Like that. Okay, so, you know, actually, our special guest just arrived. So without further ado, let me introduce you to the fabulous Kerrigan Byrne. There she is. Oh, hi. Hi. I feel like I always look very yellow when I'm with you guys. There's something with my lighting in my office that's very gold. And I'm like, you guys are all luminous and beautiful. And I'm like, my whole situation has the liver disease. I don't know. What's going on. Well, we're just continuing with the liver. You know what you're saying, Kerrigan? Oh, I have some whiskey, if that's okay. Was I supposed oh, to bring one? Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, I really heard so I much, too. I'm going to be drunk. more awesome. You just hit the next bar of becoming more awesome. I'm just like, oh, wow. Yeah, you just bypassed all the wine and went to the whiskey. Oh, my God. <laughs> so I'm very excited that you're on my channel. I'm not going to lie. I'm a little fangirling right now. Um, yeah, so um, someone take over as I like compose myself. <laughs> so I'm, we're like old friends now. We've been here before. We've done, I it. Know. We've done it. Right, right. I feel like I, yes, but you're so awesome. So I'm like, okay, we've got this. But I, yeah, you're just fantastic. I'm just, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm just so excited. <laughs> well, yeah. while Carrie is fangirling, we just want to say, first of all, thank you for jumping on with us and kicking off the series that we are all excited to jump into. Um, some people have already started. We've got folks that are tabbing the hell out of their books. I mean, yeah. oh yeah, the notes galore. So oh, yeah. we're really excited to have you here. Oh, thank you. I just, thank you. <laughs> I never get used to that. <laughs> Tiffany, a Neverland Pixie. She's one of right. the girls in the chat room right now. She was on with us on Wednesday and she bought her copy and she had like, I don't know, maybe a hundred. Yeah. Tabs. She like tabbed the book out. So she's like loving the Highwayman so far. So, um, good. Yeah. So what are you guys, what do you guys tab? What is the stuff that you uh mm -hmm. tend to need to go back and read again or that you mark exactly i guess it's phrases yeah. that stick out yeah. you know yeah. um, things you want to talk about in the show mm -hmm. right. yeah i probably mm -hmm. tab just one thing and it would probably be my favorite scene that i could read over and over and over oh, again yeah <laughs> I, yeah, I tend to tab stuff that I think we're going to talk about or that if there's like, if a guy says something super sexy, I like tab it and I'm like, look to my husband and I'm like, you could say this whenever you want. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> I was like, whatever. I was, my husband today, I was like, 
I was like, babe, do you burn for me? He was like, well, I was like, just tell me you burn for me. He was like, I'm not burning. The only person I burn for are my kids. I'm like, no, not like on fire. Like, yeah. burn, burn for me. <laughs> went right over his head. <laughs> <laughs> Like, they are not so dumb. Like, that's the thing. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I want you to be, like, not so dumb. So, <laughs> I, I haven't read uh, yet. It's on my TBR pile, but the Bromance Book Club yet. But I, well, when I heard what that was about, you know, about men who were trying to get their shit together by reading romance novels, mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. just, I'm like, that is a very good idea. Whoever yeah. had that that's idea, right. it's basically yeah, it a genius. Yeah, the first one out of that series was my favorite. Yeah, yeah, I would. Yeah, I agree. The first one is super good because I like how she combines the story that they're reading, like that the bromance mm -hmm. book club is reading, as well as like how he's going to use all those things to. So since she wrote two books, she wrote like the oh, book in a right. book. Right. I mean, Oh, well, like, in that cool. first book, she wrote, like, the right. book that they're reading, uh -uh. and then she wrote them, like, trying to use that book's knowledge. So, it's like, she wrote two books. I'm like, that seems really fucking hard. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yes. I can't I can write one book. Like, yeah. She did that, like, yeah. Shakespeare play within a play thing, which is just mm -hmm. nut, nutball hard, I imagine. So, <laughs> I'll probably never try it. <laughs> but cool <laughs> for her, though. Like, I just thought that, I mean, in real life, that should be happening. I feel like Every Absolutely. man should get a romance novel shoved in their hands and be like, read this, say these things, do this yeah. stuff with your mouth. <laughs> like, <laughs> make an effort. Yeah. Yeah. Make yeah. some yeah. effort. Other areas. <laughs> right. It's mm -hmm. like anything else, though. You have to study to be good at something, right? And men aren't normally, that's like, that's not, like, in their DNA. So to, like, study it and learn it, yeah. Like, I think that yeah. that's a good... I mean, study to have like a romance novel study course. Men need a little bit more education, mm -hmm. education in the romance fields because they're, just, like, you know, they're cavemen. Right, and yeah. it's not all men, but some wow. men definitely need, and That's maybe some right. women too. They need a little extra push. We need love. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. My dad used to have a subscription to no lie. He used to have a subscription to Cosmo. Now, it's kind of gross because it was my dad, but he had to write it. <laughs> <laughs> he was That's really cute. And I was like, okay. <laughs> He's all giving you advice on what shoes to wear. With your... oh He's like, God. hey, I know this spring plaid's going to be big. <laughs> also. Charles, yes, you are, buddy. You are totally ahead of the curve, my friend. Yeah, totally. <laughs> That's hilarious. I love so, your dad for that. So we had well, a we question, have some phenomenal questions for you um, yeah. from awesome. our readers and or from your fans, I should say, because we're all your fans. Yeah. And then, <laughs> um, did you guys want to start off with some questions? Yeah, I see one here. Um, Anna asking Kerrigan, how many yeah. books do you have on your TBR? That's a really good question. I don't know. Because <laughs> it grows all of the time. There, uh, I have like a lot. Of, I'm really bad at keeping up things on Goodreads. Like really bad. Um, but I have a lot. Like I have categories. I have books I should read but probably won't for a while. Books I really want to read but don't have time for. Um, I try to read books that are in my genre so that I can kind of keep abreast of what's going. And that almost feels like research, even though it's really fun research. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And then there's like books from friends that I need to read because they're friends. And I also want to, but like, you know, so I just have all of these like different books and I try to pick one off the top of each one, you know, and I even have like books I have to pretend I read. <laughs> Next yeah. time I talk about <laughs> person or whatever. So like a lot of books. <laughs> but like a lot. I would say a lot. There's a lot. There's many. I'm not do you, do you often say, Oh my god, your book was so great and you just never read it? Like have You're you like, um, <laughs> I wouldn't say I do that very often because I try to be really honest about like right you know uh, about being like i haven't gotten to that yet even though okay. i mean to but there are some books that uh i should read or um are just maybe part of the the diaspora that i need to read or 
right. um, that like my sister lent to me and it's still on my nightstand mm -hmm. from seven months ago, just stuff like that, that it's like, that I have kind of gone, oh, totally, yeah, it's here my nice son. I totally want to half of it. And I've read like five pages <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or whatever. So mm -hmm. every now and again, yes, I do that. Um, I'm very careful not to do that to other authors because I think, number one, that could be very embarrassing. When people are like, oh, yeah, what's your favorite part? <laughs> or whatever, like that's so fast. easy to get caught. Oh, yeah, and I would, feel, yeah. I would feel really bad. I would rather hear, oh, I haven't read your book yet, you know, but I'm sure it's great or I've heard great things than – somebody mm -hmm. lied to me about having read it so yeah but i do but i i do do that to people who lend me books or who sometimes give me book recommendations that i know i probably won't enjoy agree with or like get to maybe or i or i started and didn't want to finish and i and i know i have to give it back to them and it's gonna crush them if i don't like it like i have a couple of like elderly neighbors who they're like you're a writer you're gonna love this book and I'm like oh okay and I'll just go like look up the reviews Reading. or something and then right. give it back to them a week later oh so good okay so I have to tell you Karen this is my girl Lacey and she actually introduced me to you and then mm -hmm. I binged everything you had. So oh. <laughs> um, she wanted to know um, that is there a certain heroine or hero that resonated with you on a personal level because there are parallels with people in her life or experiences? That I've written myself or that I've read? Mm, that's a good question. Oh. Um, Lacey, <laughs> come back to me, girl. <laughs> I can answer. That I've we'll written see. myself. Um, I would say, and I think this might be true for all authors that you put a little bit of yourself in every character. Um, but I would say probably I would be an amalgamation of Farah and Mina and Fiona the most. Uh, I think Farah because I had her job at one point. And um, she and I tend to think alike. You know, she was one of my first heroines that I really wrote a full novel about. So I think we have more in common just because I was writing from that place. Um, I think Mina, off, it, because uh, if, if there was a hero that was most like my husband, it would definitely be Liam. Minus the Scottish, unfortunately. <laughs> but, like, but, you know, I ended up marrying into, I have stepkids. I married into a family who's 10 years older than me. You know, he's military. He um, he kind of had a similar family background. You know, he's like a little wounded soul and that kind of thing. So I, I think a lot of times uh, I always kind of had a fascination with Jane Eyre, too. So I say that's my Jane Eyre novel. But I also say, you know, I took some of that from personal experience. And then um fiona from business of blood which is my mystery i also had her job like doing evidence collection and that kind of thing that's cool for, wow. uh yeah it was it was really interesting it was a good job you know it was good it was i don't want to say fun but it was fascinating um right, right. It was and i knew that, yeah yeah just like a, i didn't do any of the i i, I don't have a job in uh, a degree in science or forensics or anything I was a history major, <laughs> but I was a paralegal for a while that, and I took several courses while I worked for a district attorney's office that turned into an evidence collection, like basically just bag and tag job. So I just made sure to maintain the chain of evidence uh, or, and I would collect it from the scene and make sure it was all organized and bagged and tagged and everybody knew where things were. So it wasn't as a glorified secretary, you know, on scene. Right. It wasn't, um, I wasn't like CSI or anything <laughs> like cool like that. You know, I just cool, showed up, put stuff in boxes, but I, I was there. Like, it was kind of interesting to, to be there and see like, oh, there's brains on the wall or whatever, Ooh, you know? Right. Like, yeah, it's, it was a little yeah. crazy, but, um, I loved her, her story because I, I find that part very fascinating and there's a part of me that wishes um, I had another life to live wherein I was good at math and science so that I could do something like that. Cause I really enjoy, I really enjoy, 
I don't want to say murder, but you know, I'm one of those people that like serial killer podcasts and Dexter, oh, yeah. the ID channel, yeah. that, you know, and I just, you know? yeah, I really enjoy that part of stuff. So, mm-hmm. right. Oh, you should, that's that's where I was in the squishy writer. You should mm-hmm. do something twisted where like the heroine falls in love with the serial killer. Mm. Okay. Oh. Well, I kind Ooh. of have that going in Fiona. It's not love so much as obsession. Um, yes. <laughs> And she's obsessed with, I, it's a very kind of like, Fiona has a Hannibal Lecter-esque relationship with Jack the Ripper. Because oh. she's looking for him. Because he killed her childhood best friend. But as she looks for him, you know, he writes her letters. Sometimes he helps her solve cases. And uh, she doesn't know who he is, but she knows that he's close. And so they kind of have this respect slash she's wow. trying to catch him. So... But there is something kind of sexy about that. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Without yeah. being super yeah. twisted. But maybe a little twisted. Oh, no, it's a little twisted, but we like I like it. Yeah, pushing the limit is okay. Like, especially that. Like, <laughs> I'm okay with that. Yeah. Um, no, I, with that. Right. Um, okay, so I guess the next question, is there an author like myself that you fangirl over since I'm fangirling over you? Who do you fangirl over? <laughs> So many, <laughs> so many. Um, I think uh, I, I'm a huge fan of J.R. Ward. Oh, um, uh-huh. Huge fan. And if <laughs> yes. I ever met her, I would probably like. Is that her? Oh my god! Like, that is like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she is so smart. She's so smart, oh and she I writes like, men so well. And she's like also bottle. kind of dark. Yeah, I just, I feel like if I ever met her, I would just, I would oh, was literally. Zadis, like one of your favorite books? Huh? Zadis, was he like one of your favorite books? Did you love? Right? Yes, it was a very Good. seminal yeah. book for me. Yes, yes, I was. Yes. She, I, I've watched interviews with her and like she is so regimented in how she writes and like how she plots everything. And she's like, every day I get up at six, I do this and this and this. And she's like, no matter what day of the week. And then I eat one bagel and then I run. And then I'm like, oh my God. Like she- <laughs> I need to learn from like, her. <laughs> That's why we can't meet because I'd be like, hi, I'm the most flaky, disorganized person in the world. You have no reason to respect me. I love you. I get my life together like to do nothing. And like mm-hmm. she- I mean, but you know, I love, I love the black Tiger brothers. So they're like, yeah, they're like my people. I, yeah. I can't even, yeah. like, sorry. Um, I but also like, really love, uh, Karen Marie Monning whole. Yeah. Lot. Overall her Highland series. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 And I liked, I mean, everybody's super nuts about the Faye series and I, I really loved it also like Jericho. And I can tell you this now cause I've moved on, but like, I always have my passwords to all of my stuff. Um, I change them a lot, but they're usually the names of characters that I like from <laughs> right. literature. Plus mm-hmm. a, a number and a letter and X, whatever, awesome. you know, and a symbol. Right, more than um, that. So you guys yeah. know that now. That's out there in the world. Um, but Jericho <laughs> is one of them for a very long time. <laughs> yeah. so, um, you won't be able to use it anymore because I can't use it anymore. <laughs> Nothing will let me in. But, right. like, I have to remember, like, who do I like right now? Like, I don't know. Um, but, yeah, Jericho was one of mine for a really long time. That being said, I I really enjoyed her Highlander stuff when she was writing right. romance novels. That was that is money. That's, that's my love. Money. Yeah, I'm yeah. not gonna mm-hmm. lie though. The only reason why I'd crack into your computers is for your novels, like the ones you're oh. working. On. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> why do you crack this code yeah. right now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah. The thank you, no, thank you. I want to go straight for your books. <laughs> so, yeah. um. Charles asked a really good question. He says, will you write an FF or an MMF historical or are there any other genres that you want to write in? And you kind of talked about this last time about other genres you kind of want to kick into. Mm -hmm. Uh, Please disregard my sound, but yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry about that. Um, (laughs) I'm curious uh, for, yeah, that question. (laughs) Um, the good girls that I'm writing right now, they're a little bit shorter novels. Uh, they're more category length than single title lengths. And um, I have two of them slated for next year that they're like cousins of the family that I'm writing about right now. And one of them's going to be a female, female, and one of them's going to be a male, male. 
So, oh wow, um, yeah, for sure. Wow. Hey, I've never what? written either of those before. I've read them, so it's going to be kind of my first foray, you know. And I've been, oh. you know, part of the LGBTQ community. I've had uh, long relationships with women. You know, I ended up married to a man, but um, yeah. I, you know, I've been out for since the '90s, <laughs> since high school. So it's something that I've always wanted to do. Um, but it was it's it's been difficult to kind of do mainstream and also I just never found like the right story right. and finally I'm like you know what I just I'm gonna do it because I've always wanted to so Ooh. definitely a yes I'm just gonna do it and, and then um so happy. Happy. is it gonna be historical again and sorry I missed that part as my phone was ringing I'm sorry <laughs> is it gonna be historical um historical romance yes. uh-huh okay. yes it's the the good girl series is kind of a Victorian rebel spinoff it's in the same oh, world. Really? It's 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 the family that Carlton Morley marries into. Okay. Uh, Chief Inspector Morley. So the first one's seducing a stranger, which is Morley's uh, Morley's story, and that from the Highwayman, right. and then um, the all of her her siblings. Their last name is Good G O O D E, and they're the good girls, but none of them are that good. Where do you huh? get the names from? Do you, uh, are they like the names that you pick for your characters? And are they from people that you know that you mm. like, or do That's they just? Usually I, okay. I, I notice names a lot cause I like things that are, that have a lot of meaning. So I try to look at a lot. Of, I use a lot of Celtic names, but I try to make them like period appropriate too. Mm. Um, but I get a lot of last names <laughs> again, when I worked at a jail, uh, I used to go through the inmates list and there were last names that I thought were really awesome. Like I'd write them down because I thought they were cool. Um, <laughs> we're or like I really of where so you Morley is inmate number eight one seven. Yeah, so. <laughs> was like, there was a jail and then I was a forensic anthropologist. Essentially, I was both. No. <laughs> and then I was like a belly dancer, according to your website. So I'm like, yes. what? What are you that not doing? I was like. <laughs> I that was my like I love dancing like I grew up in an Irish family we all dance a lot right. I did love dancing so that was just something that like my my uh maid of honor dragged me to a class she's like I'm belly dancing and I was like no <laughs> like that sounds really scary and she's like no it's so fun just go it's like so body positive it's so great and that was I don't know I think I was like 23 when I went and I went and I like fell in love with it so hard um and so I used to teach and stuff for a while and it was it was a lot of fun but I don't do that now like honestly once I started writing professionally everything cool that I used to do just went away like this is all I do now <laughs> so which is a bummer I'm trying to get some balance back but right um but yeah, I mean, I worked, I started in law enforcement when I was 19 as like a, a, a paralegal secretary while I was going through school um, right. for a work release program. And then I moved to the medical department, which is where I got a lot of name names. <laughs> so like, mm -hmm. people have interesting names. And then I, I, I pay attention to, at the end of movies, I just find people's names kind of interesting. I've always been sort of into the etymology of things. So a lot of times I'll like just kind of scan it and be like, oh, that's a hot name. Or like, oh, that's cool. Like that. You right. know, so I just I just kind of pick right, pluck yeah. them out of the ether. But no, I don't usually use names that I know because I don't want anybody I know to read my books, which they don't, by the way. Like none of my family reads my books. None of what? my friends. Are, no, <laughs> like, no, nobody does. Oh. Yeah. Which is fine. Which is fine for except for my husband's grandmother who recently passed away, and that oh, was like I love her. mortifying to me. Mortifying. <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> like I just was like, there are still there were times that I would like uh, be typing, and I'd be like, Grandma's gonna read that. It's fine. <laughs> but, yeah. That's, That's so funny you say that because Sarah J. Mass is the same way when she's writing some of her smut. She's like, and my mother in law is gonna read this. So, exactly. Mine used to be exactly. funky. Once upon a time, grandmas used to, you know, they used to get it mm -hmm. in. That's why they're grandmas. That's <laughs> why they're grandmas. Well, right. and I mean, I, I want them to still be. Like, I remember yes. being with my grandma when, she, you know, my grandparents were married for 65 years and they were so in love. They never, Aww. like, slept away from each other for more than two days at a time. You know, and when she passed at 85 or 86 and he was 87, like he was gone eight months later and he was in great health. 
before him, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and they just love, loved each other. And I remember one Thanksgiving and they were, they had eight kids. So we have a huge family. Wow. And like one Thanksgiving that everybody was cooking and they were talking and stuff and about uh, uncles and bitching about their husbands and that kind of thing and how they're not romantic and they're not, you know, and they're kind of like, and they're too tired to have sex and blah, blah, blah. And my grandma was like, my grandma was like, Robert and I make sure that we have sex twice a week. And she's in her 80s. Oh. And she was like, <laughs> And we just think that we do that. It's good for our hearts and it's good for our marriage and it's good for our love and blah, blah, blah. Oh, and like no. all of the men were like, grandpa's getting it more than we are. That is <laughs> So like, I want old ladies, you know, I want everybody. Oh, every yeah. age to, I'm like, if they're hitting it that much, like I think everybody should be. Yeah, and then there's like, let me stop it. Let me stop. <laughs> careful when yeah. you go into those rooms at night and do our meds. I have to like not. <laughs> I thought I've heard that, that like in a lot of care I centers. Stuff, of... <laughs> <laughs> I, I love that. I love that. I'm here. I'm here for that. I'm here for it. Um, was it difficult to write the darker parts in your novel? Just out of curiosity. Mm-mm. No, I have to be careful about that, honestly, because like I've always loved horror fiction. I've always loved dark fiction, and like. I, maybe with some of the jobs that I had and have and stuff like I'm really hard to shock I really enjoy kind of going there or thinking about going there wherever yeah. there is I, there's just not really a lot of places for me that are super taboo um I mean when it comes to actionable things yes but when it comes to media and what I take in I just it's I'm not the kind of person that gets shocked or that looks away from the screen or has to skip, you know, I just don't, it doesn't bother me and doesn't bother me to write it either. And so um, I have to remember that it does bother other people because I absolutely believe that it's okay. And I don't ever want to, and I know that I trigger people often and I've gotten in trouble for that. Uh, And I am sorry if I ever hurt anybody, but at the same time, you know, uh, Short answer is no. I just, it's just not. Yeah. I write it because I want it to be out there. I write it because I mm-hmm. want people to be able to come back from dark places. Like, I think that's a really important message. You have to from everybody else too. And if that's what right. you are, embrace it because I enjoy it. Alicia. I, I love your writing. <laughs> I, I, I wish you could get darker. Like I wish you could. Oh, I wish you would love yeah. it. I mean, right? No, I feel yeah, like you're me holding yeah. back. Like, if you yeah. wrote, and this was a question, was this it is you our question? <laughs> One of you our questions. Nasty, girl. It's your question. As bananas, like no holds barred. You could like, you know, put a guy in a latex condom and suck out all the air. Like, <laughs> what would you do? Like, um, you could I get aliens who have sex with sheep. What would it be? I'm more vanilla, I think, sexually than a lot of people think I would be. Or like, I mean, when it comes to like what I really, what I, what really gets me going, I love, love, love voyeurism. Like, I love it. I love the idea of like watching somebody when they're they don't know you know what I mean like the, I think I would definitely like to go there more it's like I know it's a felony but like, <laughs> <laughs> not in a book not in a book yeah, 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 I'm actually pitching to a publisher uh I'm turning in a synopsis literally tomorrow um a book that the working title right now is Blurred Lines and it sort of has that a little bit of that voyeuristic in it. Yes. So um, it's increasingly difficult to push the envelope, though, as much as I would yeah. like to. Um, I also have a really, i always kind of had have, have had a little bit of a kink with like, God, I'm going to get in so much trouble for saying this. I, like, <laughs> like, like dubious consent, but not... Okay. Um, right. not contemporary right. dubious consent. Like it's only okay if they're like gladiators or Vikings or like those kind of guys. I don't know why. In my brain, this is all in my brain. This is not yeah, ideologically right. yeah. or politically <laughs> or ideologically or any of that. But like sometimes when there's like a gladiator in the room, 
and like mm-hmm. he is given a woman i'm like he doesn't know better than to just take <laughs> rabbit fur and i'm yeah. here for it you know <laughs> <laughs> I'll be behind his shoulder, like move over. I want to see. Yeah, you. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and the same. It's like I'm like, 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 like a a pirate or like kind of a like, Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I mean, I'm, 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 I'm the same way. I can't help it. Yeah, as long as like, like I don't know. I think for me, as long as the um, what is it? The trigger warnings are there. Mm-hmm. I don't know, yeah, like, I think that's if you don't want to read it, don't fucking read right. it. Like, you don't like, have to buy it. You don't have to read it. But, buy it, yeah. don't read it. Like, yeah. I don't need a trigger warning. Scared. I don't need a trigger warning. I'm good. Like, yeah. I'll, I'll read anything. Yeah. I, don't read I think, well, I think they're nice. I think money, now money, that people money. are starting to expect them, I don't mind. I don't mind putting them up there right um i haven't just because it it never occurred to me again because i i don't have very many triggers um or i can get an idea of where a book is going and be like oh well that's not something i want to you know and and i don't have it's not like any whisper of anything sets me off you know and i'm somebody with uh diagnosed ptsd you know so like i grew up in a polygamous cult Lots of people in my family went to prison <laughs> for a long time, you oh, know, really? and uh, yeah, it? yeah. Like I was on Dr. Phil this year about it. Like uh, wow, I'm going to be what? traveling with, yeah, yeah. I'm going to be traveling with uh, the Federal uh, Victims Commission to different FBI agencies and local police departments about how to Identify. treat children in raids. Wow. When, you know, when the ATF and the FBI are going in and kids are involved and how traumatic that can be. Wow. My sister, my family. So there's stuff like I could be triggered, you know, and a lot of this came out because I wrote How to Love a Duke in 10 Days. And there was a month of lots of people calling me out, writing letters to my publishers because I had a rape scene of an underage woman in the prologue and didn't do a trigger warning there. Right. Mm-hmm. And it never occurred to me to do that, you know, and right. it came to the point where I had to mention to people because they sort of demanded like, this is not how a a person who's undergone this kind of trauma would act or how dare you write this or whatever. And like nowadays you kind of have to be like, I can write that because I went through it or I can write about LGBTQ because I am one. Like you kind of have to out yourself Right. To give <laughs> in, in every different way in order mm-hmm. not to get canceled, you know. Mm-hmm. And that's right. traumatic for an author. It sucks. It sucks really bad. But right. at yeah. the same time, you know, because they I mean, kind of went along with that experience that they went through or what they they are. I mean, I and I don't feel exactly. sometimes they have to. I don't. I, right. you know. Well, so do you feel like, like, like I don't know if I don't know if you um you guys read Jennifer Armentrout. I I really love yeah. and admire yeah. her but she yeah, posted like, something about that i think today um because of she's having the same problem because she wrote somebody with clinical depression and she's like i shouldn't have to have to discuss that with you right that i have you know what i mean and she's she kind of had a rant about it and i was like oh my god preach like we all feel this way but none of us were able to say or some of us probably do say i don't know i try to stay off twitter but <laughs> right you know yeah but twitter's the devil it's tough, yeah. really tough. I mean, I you just trying to write a book to like get your experience out there, to get your thoughts out there, and mm-hmm. then to have backlash is really, I'm and sure. Sometimes really it's, it's, it's therapy too, right, Kerrigan? Right. Like oh, find yeah. like therapy yeah. in it, and then to, to have mm-hmm. to say, all right, well, I wrote this because I went through this. It's kind of fucked up, you know, that you have to right. put it. It, is. it feels that way. way. Yeah, uh, but yeah. I do mm-hmm. understand on the other aspect of like putting the triggers out there for people so they know walking mm-hmm. into the book like this is what's in there so I totally. do get that as well like to be like oh there's rape in here and then that's that instead of being like well did you have that experience I think that's a whole nother I conversation like, like, that okay. is a whole nother conversation because there's right. gray areas there too right because I right. feel completely yeah. different right. uh, yeah. about, uh, you know when it comes to like I'm I do approve of own voices, especially when it comes to authors of color. And so it's, it's kind of like, uh, where does that line, where is that line drawn? You where know? is the line drawn? Exactly. Yeah, I don't know where that is. I don't, and I don't know. I don't know. I can't say, but, um, cause I feel like I'm kind of on both sides of it, depending on the, t- 
depending on if you ever feel like your experiences have desensitized you in any way to when you are writing your book that maybe that's why you don't I mean I don't think about I'm starting to think more about trigger warnings now but reading 10 or 15 years ago I would never have expected to that just Mm -hmm. wasn't a thing no Um, yes we just we had this whole conversation before you came on because right. of how people have been such uh, up in arms about Bridgerton and there's a non-consent scene and all that. And mm-hmm. I'm reading, I'm reading this right now, mm-hmm. and she's raped. So I think you're like on my phone. I'm like, it's a pirate's love by Joanna Joanna Lindsay. Lindsay. She's mm-hmm. raped like chapter six, and then she's raped yeah. like. Chapter seven, chapter eight, <laughs> accepted. And it's just like, okay, this is the, I guess, the time we live in that there is an expectation of having this trigger warning and everybody is sensitive. But like in 1978, when this book came out, I don't think anyone was going like, oh no, she's going to get raped. No, That's no. Terrible. I mean, I even <laughs> ran into something like that. My husband was watching a movie. It was like a Clint Eastwood movie. Right. Uh, like a long time ago and he's like oh I used to watch these with my dad and it was just like on and late at night and he was kind of I don't even remember which one it was because I don't watch westerns really not that I'm against them I just just not what I um and it was this part where like he drags this woman into a barn and she's like fighting him and he mm-hmm. has sex with her I'm like oh he's the bad guy and he's like no he's the hero of the story and I'm like he has a raping that woman and she's like well I mean you know they kind of make it seem like she wants it and I'm like are you kidding me and he's like no i mean like not now like he was literally like no i mean you know like not now that's not how they thought it now but like when they made the movie like it was fine for that to happen and and he's just like kind of putting her in her place and he's like because it's a western and they were a little rapey it's like okay i was was so incensed i was so upset but i was like okay if i really take a deep look at this like i 100 percent read that and I'm fine with it mm-hmm. in my, you know, so I seeing it was a little more jarring. It's traumatic completely. Yeah. But, right. it, but it's not like, I don't mind. Rape- okay. Hold up. I, if the bad guy is raping somebody, I don't mind that it's there on the screen. Um, but you can ne- like, you can't make a rapist a hero. Right. But then no, again, I, I love Jamie. Lannister. I loved he Jamie Lannister. Like after, like after the Game of Thrones was over, he raped his sister. So I don't know. I, like I said, blurred lines, great areas. I don't know. Like, I don't know like, what to really, do. but he really raped his sister. He was like, like, having babies, so she liked it. Stop. Yeah. Like, like, and you know what? Like, let's, right. let's be honest. Fantasy, like they said before, fantasy gets a heck of a lot of passes. Like they get yeah, a lot true. of passes. We're historical. Yeah are starting to get called out. And I feel like we need to keep the standard level with everybody. It doesn't matter what genre it is. So we either accept Mm -hmm. it or we don't, whatever we ended up deciding, but it needs to be same for all genres is what I'm saying. Well, it's a delicate balance too, because Mm -hmm. when you're writing history, you can't really change what history was or what happened. And so now we're kind of trying to walk a line as historical romance authors of how, what do we stay true to and what do we have to change for the sensibilities of the time? And I think that's an important thing to have in our minds, but it's getting very complicated. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, there's stuff like, um, like with all Scott and bothered, I wrote the whole book and um, she didn't inherit a gambling den. She inherited a brothel. She was a madam. Oh, right. And so everybody that worked oh, for her was very flagrantly hooker, sex workers. I'm sorry. I'm working. I'm getting up with the lingo. They were all sex workers. <laughs> and right. they were <laughs> proud to be. And it was still the same thing. There was, a school, there was a school downstairs. There was a daycare. There was, you know, but she was a madam. And at the end of the day, she decided to remain a madam. And she just wanted to do that for the rest of her life. She, she was sex worker positive and um my editor who is uh with st martin's very progressive very wonderful um black woman was like we can't put this in walmart they won't let us do this anymore you have to change that she is a madam and she hated it i hated it it was kind of a 
laborious rewrite, but she said, you know, that's not the kind of stuff we can do anymore mm-hmm. because oh, nobody, wow. yeah, no, like I'll get in trouble for that. St. Martin's would get in trouble for that. Wow. Um, and most of the time we want to shrug our shoulders and say, we don't care, but Walmart pulls the books, Barnes and Noble pulls the books that really hits the pocketbook. What do we do? Yeah, you know? we're right. So absolutely. That actually segues into one of my questions for you, because a bunch of your books, you know, obviously the Victorian rebels and this one, which the third book in this comes out March 9th, which is right mm-hmm. after we talked to you at the end of Victorian rebels. And I'm so excited to read it. I can't even talk about it. I've been pre-ordered. It's ready to go. <laughs> um, those are all under St. Martin, but then you have the good girl series and the Highland magic series. And those are all under someone else. So how does that mm-hmm. work when the same, like it looks like the seventh book of the Victorian rebels kind of segues into the good girls is, are you going to mm-hmm. stay going more of the indie publisher or are you going to go back to St. Martin? Uh, I'm writing for St. Martin's right now. Like I have four more books to write for them, but I think okay. that, uh, and it's in a brand new series. Like I'm doing a oh. new um, series that's kind of based on fairy tales, but reality, like it's not, okay. there's no magic. There's no anything like that, but there's like, this is the Cinderella story and this is the Snow White, whatever. Um, so, I will stay in New York, yeah, and with New York publisher, but I really do enjoy being able to just sort of write kind of whatever floats my boat a little bit too. You know, these little short kind of fun um, things that I've just never been able to fit. So, like sometimes when I write a book, it's because I just wanted to write this one scene or this one conversation or this one situation or this one love story and I just don't know. And I, and I want to build a whole story around that. Like with, with Morley's story, uh, seducing a stranger, like I really wanted to just write the scene where a guy who's so like proper and good and nice and respectful kind of buttoned up, like is sexually solicited. We're okay so, for that. Yeah. Right. Oh, what's that? I, yeah. Yeah. Right. Oh, hold on just a sec. I lost my Bluetooth speaker. Oh God, we're on speaker? Like your family can hear us? <laughs> oh no, no, no. I was on my um I'm on my earbuds. Oh, and my God. Um, I got a call from something and like Somebody and it went away. So like, I just have to keep traumatizing your poor family. Okay. Yeah. Well, when do you know when do you it's only my, language? Me and my husband who live here, so I'm okay. you know, I'm by myself. <laughs> I'm just in my bed. Okay. Um <laughs> So he just my question, because we're talking about Officer Morley, like um I probably said his name wrong. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm terrible with names. But um he's like an officer, so for him to be like solicited right that would be like oh I love that. Uh, that that yeah that's gold i just wanted that to happen so i'm like well then what happens and then the whole book happens you know because like right but i couldn't put that anywhere else so that's usually that's usually how i come up with something you know i'm like i just want to write this right see and i'm curious if other authors run into that same problem because I feel like there's other authors out there that like write a ton of other stuff, but I'm wondering if they have to pull things out as well because right. they're like, no, you can't write that. No, you right. can't. Do that. Sure. In fact, I hear about it. You know, like we'll, we'll sit around and kind of have sessions about it. Like, mm. you know, I had to write out. It's one of the first rules of writing is to kill your darlings. You know, like there's so many times when people, which means, you know, when your editor tells you, this scene isn't going to sell well or it doesn't fit or you need to, you know, even if it's something that you love, you have to be flexible enough. That's got to be so tough. Cause that's that like, a problem or something. yeah. Cause that it could be like a crucial plot point and you're yanking it. Yeah. But can you I mean, imagine, like, I'm trying to think like working so hard and like, you know, hours and hours of work and this becoming like, what you envision, like your perfect work, and then somebody taking it and saying, oh, no, this doesn't work, take this out. Like, I don't know, that would just be like, oh, so frustrating. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. So 
I know awesome. Melissa up here. I'm sorry. I'm trying to get to all your questions, guys, out there. I'm literally like trying to go back and forth. But I think Melissa asked, um, do you read any nonfiction books for research yes. purposes? And yeah, is it a all the time? Blog? All the time. I have a whole bookshelf that's like Victorian fashions, mm -hmm. and um, I have like a whole Jack the Ripper shelf. Ooh, um, you know, just. I have like the Gretz and the, the stuff that I speak to each other and address each other formally and just like kind of random, random things. Just, yeah, I definitely do. I definitely do read a lot of nonfiction, but mostly like if I'm reading nonfiction, I read a lot of like memoirs that are written by comedians, <laughs> but like <laughs> I do really enjoy. Um, I like that. Yeah. Like I love like Amy Poehler was super good Tina Fey. Amy Schumer Tina Fey, like those kind of um Neil Patrick Harris like that kind of stuff like I love when they write books I just I think they're usually mm -hmm. really hysterical so but um and then my other nonfiction it's historical nonfiction right. so you said you love like dark like scary shit what mm -hmm. like if you can recommend like one or two like a really good dark scary books that are not like you know Romance related, what would they? Be? Oh, um, I really like thrillers. Um, I wouldn't, I don't know, maybe like I used to read a lot of like Dean Toon, Stephen King, right? And Rice, Coon. like that was sort of all I did when it comes to horror. I did read the Dexter book before, like once I knew it was going to become like a, a thing, but I, I do read like a lot of those kind of psychological thrillers that are that they're all turning into series is now, you know, like mm -hmm. I love the kind worth killing. I love dark, dark wood. Uh, just sort of like uh, behind closed doors was a really good one. It's just all of that stuff. That's like, what could be happening in your own neighborhood? Okay. Like, that's just super dark and creepy. And fucked up. Mm -hmm. and, you know, I appreciate it's not that. necessarily I paranormal know. stuff. It's like, what can other people do? <laughs> that's great. Right. Um, so, so Tiffany asked a really good question. Let's pretend like you're writing this book and you're like, I want all this juice in it. I want all this stuff they're going to make me pull. Would you ever consider self-publishing? Mm -hmm. Ooh. Yeah. I mean, that's always been my plan. Um, but again, nowadays there's a lot of, there's a lot of pause to that. You know, do you make another name? So if somebody starts a, state against you it doesn't hurt your like mainstream name you know what right. i mean right, right. um but yes Ooh. like i i do think that everything that i want to write even if i don't get to write it like or nobody buys it in new york like i i will put it up eventually i'll write it myself right. Yeah. yeah. Please tell me you're putting it in a notebook somewhere and yeah, you're yeah, yeah. I all the good parts. I have it on the cloud. Book. <laughs> <laughs> I have lots of notes. I have lots of notes. Right. Of stuff that I'm like, right. Oh, right. I'm in this. I'm in this. Yeah. It's there. It's, it's all there. Coming. Someday. Yeah. I, my there. biggest fear sometimes is like, what if I die before I get to write this book? There's like other moments like, yeah. no, girl, you're not going anywhere. I won't allow it. <laughs> <laughs> no. no. No, no, no. And if if the end if the interest in this readathon is any indication, I mean, right. we have people who all over the world who are yeah. like, I have read this book. I'm ordering it right now. I mean, yeah. it's just been insane, and we're yeah. so grateful. I am starting the Highway Man tomorrow. Yep. Yeah. I'm doing. <laughs> I mean, I'm just yeah, reading like, this for fun. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. July. Right. I'm gonna read list. I'm gonna do the audiobook this time. Right. Just I own all the audiobooks. So and you know I love it because my audiobook collection is not very big. So if all your books are on there, it must be good. <laughs> I read so much. I listen to so much audio. I mostly read audiobooks. Mostly listen. I mostly yeah. Audiobooks are great. <laughs> take my money and take my money. Right. You can just have it. Here you go. Um take my money. Alicia had a really fun game and I kind of wanted to do it. Like I was like, I thought it was cute. I was like, and but before we do the game, you girls show her your shirts because um, mine I'm wearing the very last week, but they got all <laughs> 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 
Feel, I, I ordered, ordered mine. I ordered, I ordered, I ordered, I ordered one for me and one for my mother-in-law really wanted one. <laughs> so we will all wear them again at the final because you were coming back to us on Chris's channel on what day is that Chris again I'm sorry I'm so bad with dates March 6th March 6th, March 6th. but we'll say that at the end again but let's do the game first because I am excited about this game this game is okay gonna so, I get so I do we, do we all time. do we all answer this is just Kerrigan because I want to have some fun too <laughs> Oh, well, I, I want to hear, like, don't just put me in the hot seat. Okay. I want to hear all of them. Over. That's and you guys in the comments. Natasha first. Natasha first, okay? And you guys in the okay. comments, put your answers down, too, and I'll put yeah, them you up. Can put your right. Okay, so you have a minute. Where's my phone? Okay. And <laughs> you said Kerrigan first, right? I'm excited. Natasha, Natasha first. Natasha first. I'm going to mix up my questions. So I made a ton of questions that have book related, not book related, like sex related, like you guys, know. you know how horrible I am with names. So the author, okay, child, okay, okay like, this is fine. Child, okay. <laughs> and you have a minute to answer as many as possible, and okay. whoever answers the most wins. I don't know the ability <laughs> to say they won. Whoever wins and the most gets to pick the winner. points. I always like to play for meaningless Wait, points. Wait, whoever wins the most gets to pick the winner for, um, I'm giving away the hunter. the hunter. We have the hunter. We have the hunter oh to give away. You can win the hunter tonight from Chris. She had an extra copy, which that book is gold because to find them is really hard right now. <laughs> oh, my God. Yes. So I called a used bookstore in, like, Waco, Texas to find the Duke. And this little old lady yelled for Earl to walk down to the historical <laughs> romance section. And then he was, she was screaming to spell your name. And they found it. <laughs> so they are sending me a copy of the Duke. <laughs> so glad. I'm supposed to know by Monday. I got this uh, horrible copy. Look. When Sorry. things are going to be available again. I'm like, this is the worst timing. Right. <laughs> Oh, because of COVID, we get that. So it's just yeah. one of those things. I want to own fresh, beautiful copies of your books. So, so. wait a minute. I have a question for Carrie. Carrie, you see this book here? It has this sticker. Oh. This looks oh, yes. Where did you buy that? Is it, does it look familiar? Yes. Okay. Is the only time I have ever used that sticker is I've actually been somewhere at a bookstore. Is that I your signed it. Is that you? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you got a signed copy, girl. Like that every is now and again, I'll I'll just like if I'm in a Barnes and Noble, or whatever, I'll be like, oh, there's my books, and I'll just sign it and put a sticker on it. <gasps> oh, oh my god! Sorry. I got yeah. a signed freaking copy. That, that is what? amazing. I <laughs> and I'm looking at the. I'm like, I'm gonna ask her if this is really her signature because I don't. That signature is too pretty. Look at that. Okay, so it's That's yours. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. So I got in trouble once. I was like at a, a Kroger or something. I was at a grocery store and I was like, ooh. And I was just, I, there was two books there and I just signed them. Oh, and that's the lady so was like, cool. you can't do that. And I'm like, I can't. My picture's in the back. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I mean, if you don't want me to, I'll buy it. But like, she's like, oh, yeah. okay. I would have been, like, all all been like picking them up to buy. I would have been like, <laughs> That's awesome. Now it's in someone's hands that really, really will appreciate and value it and cherish it forever. Okay. Just so you know. <laughs> yeah. so, okay. So who's going first, Alicia? Natasha. All right. Uh, all right. Let me set my timer. Got a minute, girl. Good luck. Timer. Okay. Make the odds ever be in your favor. Yes, this is like very. Uh, and then we get to ten. I can write down how many Natasha. Again. How hard is this? This is like, yeah. Okay. We're all gonna pay tribute to you. I pay tribute to Natasha. All right, ready? Ready. Yeah. Ready. ready. One. Two. Oh wait, just oh, wait, we lost Kerrigan. Oh no! Wait, she'll come back. Okay, we'll oh. do Natasha. She probably just uh. Lost connection. Very right. 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 All right. Ready, Natasha? Ready. No, we okay. wait. Oh. Okay. So, <laughs> anyway, while we shoot the ship and wait, 
Um, thank you guys for being patient with me on the comments. I'm like literally like trying to scroll back and find all the questions and then go back like this way. So thank you guys. If I missed your comments, it's only because I'm trying to go back to find the questions. So um, thank you for being patient with me. And yeah, okay, here she is. She's back. Oh, she's back. Hold yes, on. You could totally still play with us, Michi. I see your comment there. You could totally yes. play. Hold on. Yes, Michi. Okay. We will we'll send you a book, Michi. We'll all chip in our like four pennies and send you a book because, we have like, to because she's been like with us from the beginning. Yeah. yeah, like Michi, I will I will give you my like six pennies and you can make uh, it work. Michi, you're gonna have to send me overnight some Sig Sig, some Balut, some good. Uh, oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> and Sarah just got off of work and she's here now. So yeah. I'll make sure I post that when Kerrigan comes, Sarah. Sorry about that. Um, Did you back? Yeah, yeah oh, no, she you. was, but it just connected again. So she is okay. having technical difficulties right now. Okay. So um, did you, oh, wait, she's trying to get in. It says device not connected. So uh, she's trying. having an internet issue. Right, right, right. She could just oh. have an internet issue. I feel your pain, girl. I feel your pain. <laughs> yeah. It's one the of those internet. things where, like, the internet just does not want to work with you on the days where you're like, I need you to work today. Like, today I need you to work, and it's just, like, nowhere in sight. Uh, aw. Guys, Mariana just liked my post, and she gave me no, a heart. No, didn't. Yeah, and she I gave me a heart. <laughs> girl, I was honestly, oh, my God. Girl, Carrie's going to die. Carrie's going to die. Know? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Look. yeah, no, I see that. So I, I see sent that. her. So I went to okay. Target. Wait, I went to Target, right? And so you know, I'm reading Culty right now. I'm like reading it via audiobook. And so right, I saw right. the Barbie. I don't know. Can you see it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's a soccer Barbie. <laughs> so I'm like, that's so um Sal from Culty, right? So I tagged right. her. Like, okay, she hearted me. That's. So funny. <laughs> I love it. I freaking love it. Like, honestly, it's okay. Cause I've got like three authors that I like. It's like Kerrigan, McLean, and then it's, it's Zapata. Like these are my authors. I'm like my go-to comfort oh, author. Wait a minute. So Lacey, Lacey Cheney says, I love seeing all your shelves. So Lacey, let me just tell you about my shelves. Right? <laughs> oh, it's fake. This is a background that my husband got me. This, this is not a show. This is this is a backdrop. Yeah. This is this is my buddy. I love Lacey. She's a doll. You guys, you guys all need to meet Lacey. She's fabulous. I actually yeah, Sarah, we're fabulous. gonna do a game, but Kerrigan, uh, her internet kicked her off and then she's coming back. So, yeah, so she'll be back in a second. So we could start the game like, now. We're just like and then Kerrigan can wrap with us if she can, if she's able to hop back on. All right, I'm waiting for her right now. You play a game. You missed it. So Alicia has a bucket full of questions, fun questions that we were going to all take turns doing with Kerrigan. Um, and then she lost connection. So I, I guess maybe we could do like two. You want to do like two? And we'll go around and do them in the interim. Yeah, we can. They, but they're like topic starters, right? Right. 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 Mix them up. And then he right. learned about us too. And then <laughs> said, I okay. thought your house was huge with what? Your house is huge with white shelves, man. Isn't it cool? Yeah, no, it's my whole basement behind this thing. You never know. I'm the one that looks like the shirt from the thrifty. And then like people come and say, oh my God, I love your shirt. And I'm like, yeah, $2. Meanwhile, my mom Oh my like, gosh, girl, that's what I do with garage shelves. I was like, oh, this is And I'm like, I don't oh, care. You're like my soulmate. It's crazy. I've met my soulmate on the internet. <laughs> okay. Wait, 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 we need to go back to Elisa. Wait a minute. You have a picture with Karen again? And like, what? Wow. You are like, I want, what? Wait, wait, where are you guys seeing this? Where? She, you just posted it. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm just posting random things. I'm not even reading them very, I'm skimming. find books in a picture. Wow. That's awesome. I'm going to oh, take a picture when she comes back on, and then I'm going to cut out these other girls. And then I'm going to like, oh, yeah. <laughs> like, I interviewed her by myself. <laughs> on the other side, like, you know. <laughs> oh, good buddy. That's, that's the internet, people. That's what I do. Okay. Okay. Really good, Alicia. 
All right, here we go. Question number one. Let's see. Craziest job you ever had. And this goes with Kerrigan's because she was talking about how she was a belly dancer and in law enforcement. So craziest job you ever had. Carrie, go. Me? Oh my gosh. I don't, I front desk worker at a hotel. Like, <laughs> I don't, I, I used to work at a coffee store. Like, I literally, zero craziness. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. Yeah. Anything crazy thing. <laughs> that is like the worst person to ask that question to. <laughs> okay, we're going to go to Natasha because I think Natasha has better stories. Do I have to answer honestly? Yeah. <laughs> of course. What the hell? What the hell? Um, I, mean, like... I was a, for just for a short, short period of time. <laughs> what well, were you? No. <laughs> I was a I was a, a a phone sex operator. Oh, love it! That is awesome. It's not. Oh my God! Say something dirty to us, Natasha. <laughs> okay, so she had an on Kerrigan. She had an answer. Got to catch Kerrigan. Coming in at a really awkward time. You guys can see my vein. I feel like I missed the good stuff, you guys. I had to like go rip my my computer, like or a laptop, out of my husband's office, and I was like, "Give it to me!" My phone kicked me off. I need this more than you do. So fun. So juicy, but Alicia asked the. I mean, yeah, Alicia asked the question. What's your craziest job? Um. Carrie was a chocolate store. <laughs> the job was boring. And then so yeah, Natasha no, said, no fun so I have to be honest. And we said, yeah, you have to be honest. And she said, okay, just for a really short, short time, a really short time, I was a sex phone operator. So we all started laughing. Oh and then my God. Come on. <laughs> the voice. Do the voice. Do the voice. That's awesome. That's cool. Okay. Talk to me. I did not last very long at that job. That's um, what you said. Because the high <laughs> title of your sex tape. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I, I met a girl and she did it. Um, and I was, my daughter was very young. I was making minimum wage. I was just trying to like make a living, right? Single mom. Um, so she got me into it. And I had to do it at night because I did have a full time job during the day. But apparently the high call volume, strangely enough, were coming in the middle of the day. These men were calling from their offices on their lunch break. They were calling in the middle of the day. Wow. Um, the girl who got me into it did. I mean, she made mad money. She did very, very well. Like she, I saw her check stubs. Right. I did not do it well because my voice was too deep. Hers was very high pitched to the point where she sounded really yeah. young yeah mm -hmm. yeah so uh and the some of the things Which i that, would think like yours would work because that like sexy husky right yeah like i <laughs> thought that that's what they would want like apparently not the ones calling in the middle of the day yeah oh i guess not <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> don't do that face. Don't do that face. you were like hey, oh my God. <laughs> yeah <laughs> a little sample Natasha. <laughs> Oh my God, yes, I'm dying, I'm dying. I want us all to put on blindfolds and then we can have Natasha read us a scene. Oh, oh, well, here's the thing, maybe, Natasha, maybe you're missing your calling about being an audiobook person for yeah. some romances. Mm -hmm. You should be a narratrix. A narratrix, so when <laughs> they called, did you have like a script or did you have to, did you come up with, did they say like, I want you to be my dirty dominatrix. And you had to come up with your own, or did you did you have a script? There, right. there was there was no script that could keep you on course. With it was pretty much they call in, and you just ask them a few introductory questions and kind of lead them into tell me what you're looking for, tell me what you want, and then you just you you have to, you have to be able to just run with it. I mean, I, I think I did it for maybe four or five months. Oh wow. I mean, Right, it was okay. right. It, for this the money, like contemporary romance yeah. I read not too long ago. I'm not even playing with you. And then she met her hero, 
during one of these calls, but she got called by mistake. But it was for like phone. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't meet my hero. Do you think <laughs> call or per how long the call lasts? So back then, it was the length of the call, how long you could keep them on. And of course, in the middle of the day, they were they needed to be in and out pretty much. They literally calling from their offices and they would tell you, I, I'm in between meetings. I need to get this done. And I'm like, no. Oh, and then they come in the meetings and they shake everybody's hands. And you're like, oh, I know. You're <laughs> nasty. Wash their hands. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, that was way back when we had 900 in first. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so, so that question to you girls, craziest, what is it? Craziest job craziest you ever had? Job you had. Okay, my husband just left me a bottle of wine by the door and like, what a good, away. What a good <laughs> man. That is a good man. Yeah. Um, I, I, I want to know you to pay well. Yeah. I, I, I told Christina this earlier when we were, I was coming up with these questions. I was a dancing bagel. <laughs> Yes, yes. I was I was fifteen, and my mom would drive me to a uh, like a bagel shop where I worked, and they'd give you a bagel costume, and you were like a bagel with legs. And I stood on the road and made people come try to buy bagels. I so love my, that. My, my, but I mean, I've had crazier, crazier jobs, I guess. Like, um, I I worked at CNN, which is. Crazy. Crazy on a different level than dancing in like a bagel costume. Uh, Man, I'm starting to figure uh, out I, I have boring jobs. <laughs> yeah, I, I ran my own. I ran my own company. I, I was a wedding photographer for like uh, 17 years. I had my own wedding photography business, which is crazy on its own. Yeah. So, right. I mean, all all different levels of crazy, but yeah. I am still fascinated with Natasha because, like, does it sound wet? I should have just said my other job, Kerrigan. I worked in a prison for four years, so I, when you were talking about working in jail, it really related to me. That's <laughs> no, this is way more interesting. I like yeah, going out. No, no, her prison stories were very interesting. They, so, yeah, you, the they things can that, I, that I have seen. Oh, yeah. Because it was a maximum facility. It was an all-male facility. So some things that I have seen, I, I really wish I, I, I didn't. Mm-hmm. 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 I didn't. I love but, Tori. Um, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> hey, I love Tori, too. I want to sell jello shots during a drag show. That sounds that really fun. Fun. I'm not going to lie. That's amazing. That's I actually like my life goal. Cool. I want to retire and just be able to do that. For wow. the rest of the yeah, what? Sell jello shots at a drag at a drag show? Yeah. Yep, that that's it. That's, See, I wanna, <laughs> I wanna, I wanna that's basically that's when I know I've made it is that I can just go to a drag show and <laughs> hand out jello right. shots to people. You can live and be well happy is what that is. That's just happy times. So, 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 too. so Lisa, <laughs> what's your what's your next question, girl? Oh, okay. My next Wait, question. did Chris okay. answer it? Oh, did Chris I, I, I didn't work anywhere crazy. Sorry. I worked at banks, check cash, and. Hey, there we go. Then the boring girl with me. <laughs> boring. I went. I went on an interview. I went on an interview once. Um, this guy came up to me and my my friend. We were young. We were like, I don't know, 19, 20. That's young now. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. That's like Joanna Lindsay. That's like you know you've already been married and raped six times. Yeah. Well, that was kind of what turned me away from from the job. It was um, we were supposed to be like be like bar girls and, and, you know, sell drinks. And then they had like a couple of pictures with like fake mixed drinks for us to drink. And then they took us to the basement and they were showing us the freezers. But there were mattresses down there and we hightailed ass out of there. We were like, yeah, no. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Storyline in next. In Kerrigan's next book. There you go. <laughs> yeah, girl. Tell me more. Yeah, that's oh crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. Kerrigan, besides being an author, do you have like a craziest job besides I probably? Feel like I gave you my whole resume already. <laughs> <laughs> Social Security. No, I would say all my crazy job stories. Like there were times I'd come home and I'd be like making dinner, and Cody, my husband, would be like, "What? 
how was your day today? And I'd be like, well, they ran out of female nurses at work. So there was only one person who could hold the speculum while they took out an infected IUD from a crack head. Like, you know oh what I mean? God. I'm like, guess who that was? Me. That was me. Oh my God. Wow. Like, <laughs> really bad I'm not trained for that. Like I was the office manager at the time. And he'd be like, Does that oh. happen? <laughs> yes. Oh, that what happened. job was yeah, that? Like, Which um, job? It was when I was, I was, I ran the office. I was an office manager for a medical department in the okay. jail. And that was, um, so I just did, I, I did the bill paying and ordering supplies and all, you know, taking notes and meetings, but like they only had some male nurses on staff at, on uh, staff, at the time. well, not staff, but on shift. And then the doctor was a male and there was a woman who needed to get an infected IUD taken out. Wow. Um, cause she was getting Ooh. pelvic inflammatory disease and that kind of thing. And so whenever that happened, me being the only woman, I was one of four female, uh, civilians who worked inside of the jail and like someone, another woman had to be in the room when anything like that is going oh on. God. Yeah. yeah. And, and so white to make sure that it's all on the up and up. And so I was supposed to just be standing there. Like I wasn't supposed to be hands on or anything, but he was like, oh no, like something went wrong. I can't tell you what, cause I wasn't trying to look, but like, I was just kind of like standing there like everything. Okay. And then he's like, you got to come hold this. Like I'm, I'm going in, you know, and he's like diving in. I'm like, oh I'm like oh, you know, and I don't have gloves on. I'm just like, oh, am I going to die now? Like, I don't know. It was not. <laughs> but like, there's oh, just stuff like that. that would have to I'd like go back oh, to my that. desk and do like the things I, you know, what has been seen cannot be unseen. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <gosh>. What <laughs> has been smelled cannot be unsmelled. <laughs> like it was. Oh. Yeah. So oh. like, I would say like, it's not a crazy job. I wouldn't tell somebody like, oh, I was an office manager at a, at a jail. Like that's not a crazy job. But like there were sometimes in my job that I had crazy days that I'm like, is this happening right now? You know, like, is this even my life? Is anybody seeing this? You know, kind of thing. Wow. <laughs> After that, did you go to the bathroom and like rub your entire body in like some kind of soap? Like, right. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Got Alicia, are the rest of your questions that crazy? No, they're not. Yeah. They're not. Okay, really so not, though. Okay. Kerrigan, you, what's your husband's name? Cody. Wow, it's funny because my husband name is Cody too. No way! <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's amazing. I know, and he doesn't look like one either. Either so I don't know how that works. Yeah. Like but Cody, every time but... I say like, because Cody's like such a Western name, like I don't even, you know. But yeah, that's I never too that. funny. <laughs> okay, so I'm expecting a Cody at some point in time as a hero. <laughs> like, you know where he's at. Or the villain. Or the villain. We or the villain. Yeah. Well, yeah, villain is great. Any sort no. of Cody, I'll put in my request. <laughs> He's probably your husband's like, don't put me in there, please. No, 100% he's that way. 100%. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So the point of the game is one person at a time. So let yeah, I thought so. I was like. I know. I'm sorry. Okay. So is Natasha going first and we just got to distract? Natasha will go first. That was our practice. We'll just be quiet. Okay. Ready, <laughs> Natasha? All right. Sure. Does someone else have a timer so I can like concentrate on reading? Oh, sure. um, let me see if I can I'm get one on here. Guys. Oh, mine are okay. Here we go. Let me know oh, you're ready. You wait, wait, hold on. Stop. Yeah, oh, Can't okay. Get I got any more it. crazier than, than what we've already talked about. So, yeah, okay, right. tell me I'm ready. I'm ready. Go. Three, two, one. Okay. Uh, coffee or tea? Coffee. Not, not as exciting as who would you rather? Uh, the person who is on your get out of jail free list. What does that mean? Like who you could fuck with no consequence. I can fuck whoever I want. I'm saying. I know. You know. <laughs> <laughs> it works for you. It works for you. You have married people. <laughs> okay. Well, we all know it's going to be Idris Elba. So. <laughs> Oh, yeah, Idris, Idris. Idris Alba. Um, if you could be any fictional character, who would you be? You're not good at this game. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Cinderella? I don't know. <laughs> Why is it be <laughs> Cinderella? Oh, you got to be second, girl. Ask Olden to Natasha. Okay. Ask Clarigan some. 
favorite author? Kerrigan Burn. Okay. No, that's the last one you're done. Okay, Natasha got three. Okay, Natasha got three. All right. Natasha. It was a minute already. Well, yeah. yeah, that's how fast it goes, girl. That's so fast. I love you, but you were not good at today. <laughs> <laughs> There's so much pressure. That's the point. It doesn't say what comes like Whoa. directly to your mind. You know? We should be more. We should be more drunk for this. I know. Right. Yeah, I'm not drunk at all. I think you're there though. Like I've been drinking my big, my yeah, big. I mean, like, big like, not, okay. <laughs> okay. Who do you want to go next, Alicia? Right. Who's next? All right, uh, Chris. You want to go next? Because I think yours uh -huh. will be fun. Go ahead. And then, and then we'll throw poor Kerrigan under the under the bus. <laughs> okay. Ready and go. Okay. Uh, we already did that one. <laughs> Best character name. Oh, um. <laughs> Remember character names. Oh my god, it's like more alive. Okay. <laughs> Where would you travel when you can? Oh, um, I want to go back to Mexico. So Playa del Carmen. Perfect. Perfect. All right. So you've got two. Okay. Uh, coffee or tea? Coffee. That one pops back up again. Okay. Uh. Movie you can watch over and over again. Selena. She got all the easy oh, ones, girl. <laughs> I can't no kidding. Here, abs or butt? Abs. Oh, abs. Ooh, abs. Okay. 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 Mm. La uh, latest book you read? Oh, um, the last one that I read? Mm -hmm. Nodded. Pam Godwin. Nodded. Simon from Bridgerton. Sexier mm -hmm. 007. What was the first one? Sexier 007, Daniel Craig or Simon from Bridgerton. Simon. That's yeah. All right, she's done, girl. Yeah. That's a minute. All right, these are my questions. You guys are <laughs> one. All right, ready? I want I want your character. This is gonna be great. Okay. Right. Well, let me see. I'm gonna mix them all back up. Everybody said oh. abs. Everybody's agreeing abs. Nobody wants butt. I'll really? take the butt. I, butt. <laughs> I don't like butts like are great and there. everything, but like abs are where it's at. Hell yeah. yeah. They have the V thing going with that. Oh yes. Oh. I love those. I need somebody that's got an ass to hold their pants up because the one thing that irritates the shit out of me is people wearing their pants below their butt. But Simon yeah. from Bridgerton is not the one because okay. he has no you ass. Need you need he has no butt. He has that's no butt. true. Right? I, I noticed that. You noticed it? See? Yeah. Thank you. I'm I, not that. I was like, I oh, that's I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I got like this. <laughs> I'm, so glad. I'm like, oh. Yeah. His face don't go with his butt. I mean, I <laughs> girl, let's be honest though. Can I say know, it's, oh, it's, it's, that's it's not a deal breaker for me at all. You should have sure. a I've got enough oh, booty for both of us. We're good. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, you know, you, he can always do more squats to like build up his booty. Yeah, I'm sure. If the other side matches, then you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can't. You can't really like change. I don't think that's how that works. <laughs> okay. uh, but, I mean, squats you, you can work on. You can work on a butt. Yeah, squats he can work on. See, I wouldn't yeah. think he. I don't think he has a third leg. Is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> I think he does. Come I don't on. Think so. No. Yes. No. Yes. No. 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 Watch it in like slow motion, scene by scene, and see no, if we see no. it. No. <laughs> no, I don't right. want to know. He's like, I don't oh, want to know that about about my like characters. I just, I just always pretend. Like, I don't want to know. Like, something. <laughs> I, who was it? I was listening to comedy the other day, and it was Gabriel Iglesias, and he talks about like being on the set of Magic Mike, and he oh. said something about like he was talking about dick size of some of the guys. I'm like, I don't want to know this. Really? I want, I want, I want, I want really? my illusions to be shattered. Please stop. Yeah, you know, you know, you're so right there, girl. Like, yeah, like, these girls, not so much. But me and you are you the same thing. Yeah, I need the link because I kind of want to know who was bigger than who on Magic Mike. Because that seems 
like, like, like the biggest one was Matthew McConaughey. Well, that's not oh, yeah. And then the that's smallest not, one was Joe right Manganiello. Really? He said <gasps> that. That's kind of shocking because he's like I am seven feet tall. Yeah, that's the he, they use prosthetics Ooh, for the show. Okay, like it's well, a whole part of this whole comedy well. gig, and I was like, "Don't tell me this." Number one, that has no bearing on how much I love Joe Manganiello because I do. He's so hot. He's so hot, and he's adorable and dorky. He's like adorable, and I really enjoy that. <laughs> I don't care, and I just don't want to know. <laughs> I don't want to know. I want to know how he's hanging. The rock. <laughs> he would probably show oh, you. I feel like if you ask, he'd be like, look, okay, here. You know what I mean? Like, he's fine with it. He's just a green, yeah. free and open, that fellow. I get the feeling. You know what I mean? Just from seeing stuff he, that he He had his wife on, like, one of his, like, um, Instagram lives, and he was like, they don't call me The Rock for nothing. And I was like, oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good for you, Jason Momoa. Yeah. That man's just genetically gifted. Yeah. He's so hot. Yeah. I'd be okay with that. Yeah, no, he's, I like a guy that could like pick me up and like turn me into a pretzel. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, like, yeah. like, I need I a guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm you are not on me. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, I'm not saying that happens in like my real life. Cause like, I'm married to an accountant. But, yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, drunk. Drunk. we don't need to be more drunk. <laughs> so, wait, when is Kerrigan going to take her turn now? Okay, I'll take my turn. Okay, ready? Okay, ready? Oh, oh, I'm I'm ready? This. Hold on. You guys have to bring me in. I'm the tangent queen. So, if I take us off into the weeds, just be like, Kerrigan. Yeah, well, pay oh, attention. No, 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 no. I just, I'm interested in why you're going to stay for some of these. That's why I'm like, <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Natasha only got three and Christina only got five. So our bar is very low. That feels like hey. a lot. I'm okay. <laughs> On your marks, get set, go. Okay. Uh, best character name? Mycroft. Okay. Okay. Ooh, that's a good one. Where will you travel when you can? Ireland. Ooh, mm. fantastic. Favorite food? Indian food. Ooh, Ooh yeah. that was another question that someone asked us. Uh, Crazy job, we already had this. Okay, <laughs> this movie, movie you can watch over and over. Uh, John Wick and Midnight in Paris. Ooh, tattoos, hot or not? What, what? Tattoos, hot, hot. or not? Hot all the time, forever, yes. Hot. Okay, we need to come back to that. <laughs> we, we need to come back to that for a minute, okay. Uh, if you could be any fictional character, who? I was hoping you wouldn't get this one. Uh, I know, I'm sorry. Um, uh, skip me. Flannel or satin sheet? What? Flannel or satin? Oh, flannel. Oh, yeah, that's it. That's all she's got. How many was in that? I got satin sheets one time because I was like, oh, we're going to do this. Ooh. Like, I'm going to get all <laughs> naked, you know? Oh, I know. I know. So funny. Oh, no, I like, know. They were fine for that part. But, like, then we went to sleep and it was nothing, but, like, they were so hot. They were so uncomfortable. Right. Like, still right. would be okay, but they don't breathe at all. So I was like, this is the worst. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like is there cotton not choice there. in there? <laughs> <laughs> it's not great. So, like, change your state. Kerrigan, Kerrigan got sick. And oh, awesome. I feel like I'm on wait, wait, don't tell me. And now I'm like, ah, I won. <laughs> no. fun. So much fun. No. Okay, we need to come back to the tattoos thing though. So right. tattoos, I'm all for tattoos. Like I have tattoos, I love tattoos. I am not for like a face tat. You see mine? I mean, see, like I love a tattoo. I yeah. love a tattoo. I just don't like a face tattoo. Like mm -hmm. You know what? I'm not gonna lie. Oh no, face. I think it depends on the content. So my so daughter, too. my daughter has a huge tattoo that covers her entire back. Um, and she she had a portrait done of her granny, my ex husband's oh. mother, who passed away because she was extremely close. I mean, like inseparable kindred spirits. So oh. she had that picture put on her back. Now, before she did that, I mean, she was 18 when she got it done. I had a very candid, straight up conversation with her. 
And I said, Jasmine, uh, I said, you know, you need to think about having a face on on your body. As she said, well, I'm fine with it. I said, OK, what about if you get married and you're getting busy and, you know, your husband's back there checking out your granny? <laughs> your <grandma. you> know? <laughs> well, how's that? How that was the first thing I really thought gonna, of, too. I was like, oh, oh. oh. Yeah. it's like if you have I mean, when I say it, it another you, guy's name. It takes up the ent her entire back. So it's like, hey, Granny, what's up? Yeah, <laughs> that's a good but point. Has she one. ever mentioned that she, uh, that she regrets it? Or that she, she does not. She, she does not regret it hard. at all, not in the least. Good for her. I think uh, that's she said it, would, it would be his issue to deal with. Uh, you know, she can put a shirt on, but she that is the one connection that she really wanted to hold on to. That's awesome. I don't know if I would ever put a face on, on my body. I yeah. have tons of tattoos, but I don't know if I if I would ever put a face on there. Mm -hmm. I think the only face I would put on there would be if something happened to my child. Yeah, I could that see that. I feel the same. Well, portraits like a, a tattoo artist really needs to nail a portrait, or else yeah. it's a mistake. And I think and even some of the best tattoo artists mess up. And I just wouldn't want to be that. That would be too scary for me. Yeah. But no, I, I don't think you should do whatever a Post Malone is. <laughs> but like. I whatever. Know, weird. No. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But like I, I used to kind of be anti-neck tattoo as well. But I've changed my mind on that. Definitely. Right. Because like, I love tattoos. My yeah. husband has a ton of them. Um, I don't. But it's only because. I keep saying like. We need to get thinner. before, <laughs> And then I don't. And then also I can't land on one like i can't commit to one and right it is a commitment. yeah like so i just keep getting piercings instead but like i yeah, you could extract those if you don't like them anymore right you can change them it's just it's yeah. hard for me mm -hmm. i can you know um but like do you know who i thought was really good looking which is like the worst probably thing to say right now but like um that i thought had a really sexy neck tattoo was the guy that's been all over the news the past couple of days who survived the <gasps> yes! I yes! and he has this neck tattoo and he I has this like him. silver beard. No, oh my god. Beautiful man. And no. Daddy like he's got yeah. this, like I never would have thought you were a cop. It kind of looks like a prison tat like on his neck and he has mm -hmm. this kind of like almost yeah Southern, he was inner, yeah. not quite, yeah. yeah, but he's just like, he just has this, he just looks raunchy and the neck tattoo worked for me. I was like, wow. Yeah. He was also so the you know, thing. Thing. Was was like, was like, Remember him? No, 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 no. He was no, on the like, news the, the, the other night. Yeah, he he was like, hot. He's a model now. You see his little, yeah, little, he is a model now. He, he yeah. actually got out of jail, left his wife and kids and started dating a billionaire, got her pregnant, and now he's with someone else. No, thanks. Yeah, I'm on Team Kerrigan on this one. That guy, when he was on the other night, my husband's like watching TV. He's like, look at the news. This is horrible. And I was like, Oh, but that guy. <laughs> but that guy. Look, see, so wait, at first I thought he was on the other side. I was like, oh, he was one of those. Yeah, because he had kind of a southern oh, accent and like yeah, that kind of came out. And I was like, oh, is he one of the guys, the the protesters in my and yeah, like and then I actually that. listened for a second. I'm like, no, he's a cop. He's also he's a, a hero guy. with that neck tattoo and that beard and that face. I, I need to see a picture. Totally, well, like, this is what I'm hearing. You're gonna have your next hero is gonna have a beard and neck tattoo with a brilliant face. This is what I'm hearing for your it's next hero. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna find it. This picture. He was on. <laughs> Maybe his name's Cody. We don't know. You know, <laughs> you know what? He would be a very good Cody. Like if his name was Cody, would not surprise me at all. Oh my gosh! I, I, when I, I tell my husband, like we talked about it, and here your name <laughs> is in a book. Her husband. It's okay. Your name is in there. <laughs> I'm sorry. My husband has a neck tattoo. Him and his three brothers got oh. it. It's, it says family, but if they stand on their head the other way, it says forever. So it's really family forever. But it, like, you know, they'd have to be like upside down so you can see the forever. <laughs> <laughs> How many handstands are they doing, really? It you was guys, a good idea at the time. <laughs> yeah. No, I think increasingly I am really into the neck tattoos. I think, especially if it kind of like, if you have sort of a corded neck, 
You know what I mean? It just, it yeah. brings oh, your yeah. notice to, and necks are kind of sexy. Like I find weird body parts sexy. I'm like, I really like it when a woman has like really lovely clavicles. I notice clavicles. I don't know, like <laughs> your bones right here. Like if they just are kind of shapely, I get all like, oh, she's off. That's so pretty. And it like goes up to your shoulders. And like with men, it's forearms and necks and like your back wings. Yes. Right. So like, you're really hot. How many books right. have I read recently oh. where it's all about the man's forearm? It's the forearm. Like, yeah. It's like, yeah. Like, it's like, yeah. They're, they're like, like yeah. I look at a guy's hands. hands are really nice. Yeah. Right. I look at yeah. nice hands. Like fingers, like long, like big fingers. I'm like, yeah, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Hey. Yeah, and a, a thick neck too. You gotta look at the neck. The neck's thick. You gotta look at the neck. What are we like looking for a dog or something? Or, like, you gotta look at the neck. Like we're interviewing. Hey, we have certain specifications we want in our men. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just looking for a man, and we're all gonna be like. No, I'm not looking. Natasha, Natasha, here's the thing, though, girl. When no. you don't look, the right man's gonna come walking into your life. You're like, I'm not looking. You wait. The next time you say that, it's like, next thing you know, Natasha's dating someone. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you know what my oh, dream job is? I would love to be a tailor to men. Like I love to dress men. I love men's clothing Ooh. on how they hang on guys. You know what I mean? I love suits. I like men that look really nice. And I think it would be really fun to like get that into their bodies, like your their measurements. And like, I know it sounds like I just want to sexually harass people all day. And maybe that's <laughs> what I, mean, but, like, I want to feel them I mean, well. like really interesting to be like, yeah, it's sort of an intimate thing. And then it's also like, I dress you like you're my Barbie or something. But like, I have a lot of the shoes. Of the leg. You know, the yeah, inner, I want to that too, you know, yeah, it is yeah. kind of a, but it's, it's one of those jobs that can be intimate, but it's like, and, and there's a lot, there's trust involved and you talk like, it, it's almost like being a barber or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you know, that person, that person knows you, but you're mm -hmm. not like a doctor or a psychologist or like somebody else who goes poking around in dark places. You're just making them look good. You know, right? I just always thought that would be an interesting job. We all need to. So I'm going to be honest, Kerrigan. I could probably be on here with you forever, but it's already an hour and a half. We've been talking, guys. I mean, honestly, I could I could be on here with you for the next three hours. No joke. I'm like, hey, let's hang you out. Too. Like, You're like my favorite people I've met recently. Oh my god! <laughs> so. <laughs> we're gonna all die. We're not gonna wake up tomorrow. <laughs> when all this is over, we should do like a retreat or something, you know? Like, yeah. You name the time in the place that I would make that happen. I would be like, I'm sorry, kind of honey, thing. you, you get, get the way. I gotta go. <laughs> all right. So, Carrigan, you've you've been in the book world for a while now, a long time. Mm -hmm. right. Have you been to any of those like book cons or like mm -hmm. you know? All right, so like, which one would you recommend for us? Because we all- Which one will you be at? Which one would you go <laughs> to? Um, <laughs> I, I, know, like, sorry, I, I know where you're going with that. <laughs> uh, like I go to a lot of the historical ones and like, I really like the historical romance retreat because you have to dress up every day and that was kind of fun. Like I felt like I was a kid the whole time and they had different like, um, they had different theme nights. Like the last time I went, it was at the Mission Inn in California and it's like this, old antique it almost looks like a spanish monastery is and that socal? huh is that socal yeah socal yeah like uh i can't remember Look that <laughs> yeah it was, it was very hot and it was but it was so beautiful and they had nights like they had a speakeasy night so you had to dress up like you were um you know like you were in the 20s and prohibition and we played all these gambling games and we got drunk and then they had like a regency night you know and then we had like a like a night where we had to dress up like uh, highwaymen and harlots. So you either had to dress up like a criminal wow. or like a like kind of, you know, like a, a prostitute yeah. in the oh, 1700s. So you had like everybody's boobs were hanging out and we all played like crazy old fashioned games. And we got, there was a lot of drunk, I'm now saying that I realized that every night we had a party and we got drunk was basically what happened. <laughs> but then during the day, they had like classes where we would um, learn how to English dance like they do in Pride and Prejudice and they learned oh, how to, and then we would have those dances the last 
the last night was like the big masquerade ball and you wore like your best gown there. Oh and, they, and then they, like, if you went to the dance class, you would like go and do some of the older dance. It was just really fun. And there were a couple of women who like brought their husbands and they would dress up. Oh, and then the people, yeah. the yeah. models from yeah. period images went and they were dressed up. <laughs> You know, Alicia, like, oh, no. Mostly women, though. And, like, but it was just a good time. It was just good. I was young with that, like, 1950s yeah. look or whatever. Like, yeah. like, like if there was like, a different look. Old old going. Yeah, it was kind of expensive, though. I was, like, I kind of went all out on costumes because I was, like, oh, right. Please. You know, but um, it's like Halloween for a few nights. It was. And it was really a good time. But, like, I also went to Book Bonanza, uh, which was super fun. Uh, and I was like the only historical author there, but huge authors go to that. Like I right. was a baby author and I was like the only author. There's like one other historical author, I think. And like, but I got to meet a lot of the people that I've really looked up to, you know, like Colleen Hoover and Rachel oh, Dykin wow. and um, wow. like a lot of these people um, and some people that I've been friends with, but only met online too. Like it was just so fun. Um, and I love how, diverse everybody was you had paranormal people you had right some historical i would say i wish there was a little bit more but also um like i sat next to el james like here was her yeah. like here was her table and here was my table and like no one came to my table because the line was so long to her table but like i didn't even care because i'm like here. you know like it was really fun so i think wow. like, like there are so many um a polycon is supposed to be really good with Ar jennifer right. Armitra. i really want to go to that one um, I'd be so shocked if she doesn't invite you to the next one. I'd be uh, so well, she I invited me to 20, 2019 and I had to back out because I had to get my golf letter. <laughs> right. oh, so, like, you know you're going to the next one. We'll all be there. I really we'll hope so. Yeah. Like, like, really we'll be waiting for you to sign our books. Yeah. And <laughs> Rare. Like, I've never been to Rare. Uh, but I want to do International. Like, it's in Edinburgh right. next. And I'm like, right. well, obviously. Right. Right. Yes, wow. you have to go. It's, it's, in 20, it's in 2022, I think. 20, so right. where is it? As I've much as I think these for concert will be in 2021, I don't know if they're going to be able to pull through. I'm, you know, with everything going on, I'm yeah. like, I hope everybody gets I, vaccinated and we could go. But I do too. I, that's the thing is like, I'm signed up for, to go to Book Bonanza when it was 2020. They moved it to 2021. Um, We'll see if I'm not vaccinated by then. Right. I don't know that I'll go, you know, I can't right. make it. Right. Everything's up in the air. Yeah. So, right. Um, it's the and same. With, the oh, there's romance in the Gold Coast, which is the book obsessed chicks book blog that she's doing in New York on Long Island. Uh, I want to say Long Island. I'm in Long Island. Yeah. She's doing it. It's her first time. Kim, uh, Kim Rosha. Do you know her? No, she's like a, she does. She runs the Book Obsessed Chicks book blog, and she's doing a his, mostly historical romance retreat getaway. Um, and it'll be me and a, a lot of other his, like Tessa Dare is supposed to be there. Oh, yeah. when is Rager, it? Delilah Devil. It, it, it's it's supposed to be. It was supposed to be October of last year. She okay. pushed it to I want to say May, March or May of this year. And again, and then she pushed it again to October of this year. Mm -hmm. And so I want to say it's October of this year, but again, who knows? So it's who in knows? Long Island. I'm going to be there. If you're there, yeah, I'm there. It's in Long Island. Yeah. Oh, so, and it's, in the, it's at this, um, the, the Glen Cove mansion. Oh, okay. That's not yeah. that's like 30 minutes from me. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. I really, really wanted to do that. Cause it's supposed to be another kind of historical romance retreat. Are you guys, staying? Are you guys staying there? Yeah, we'll stay there. We'll get a room, and it's like three days. And they have different things, like you know, you get together for tea, you make things, you hang out, you yeah. dress up. Like it's just that would be fun, there, you know. That's yeah, I think cool. Cody will be you there. Go to New York first, instead of coming to the West Coast to see me. No, you guys want to come here. <laughs> so I, go to New York. I have, I have, yeah, I have on the East Coast. I'm all the way on the West Coast, so we're. A little, I am too. We're I live. I live on in Washington State, so I'm yeah. all the way. I, yeah. I'm, in, I'm in Orange County, where you were talking about. Yeah. So. I, <laughs> I we we got really close to moving to San Diego. Right. Right. It's right. So Beautiful area. It's, it's just so hot. I don't like. I don't like the desert. I've lived in the desert my whole life, and I just am all. I'm just hot all the time. 
They're, <laughs> like, they're right. Some of the right. Anyway. Orange oh, County, LA like County, kind of San Diego. They're they're a little bit warmer than Washington because Washington it rains all the time, right? Pretty, uh I would say uh-huh. most of it probably, but like I live in a rain shadow, kind of on the other side of the mountains, and so okay. we get three hundred days of sun. But, okay. Uh, but it, but it does rain a lot, but then the sun comes out. So it's not like it's twilight or it's shadowed. No, no. Yeah, that's a, I feel like that's kind of a fallacy people believe right. about up here because I see the sun all the time. Everybody <laughs> tells me, oh, I would go up there, but I couldn't possibly live up there. And I'm like, you know, we kind of have a rainy season in February. Um, the well, longest I've gone without seeing the sun is a couple of days. Right. Mm-hmm. But See, I like we think it. everything's forks. We're <laughs> yeah, and it's just not that way. Yeah. Oh, that's good to know. This is we're yeah. all getting the education here. That's awesome. Yeah. So but, but also it's really cloudy. Don't move here. Just kidding. I mean you guys <laughs> right. <laughs> Unless you want to open a romantic a romance bookstore in, yes. in Kerrigan's neighborhood because like that she would has be nice. I would appreciate so, it. Right. You could open one. Right. I, I'd totally be okay with that. <laughs> and where will you post your schedule for when you start touring? Will you just put that on your Instagram? Um, yeah. And I'll, I'll put on my website. I'll have a little events tab. That's like really empty right now. And then I, know. Um, I well, definitely. I'm, I'm sure everybody's empty. Everyone's empty. <laughs> yeah. We're all empty. Everybody's empty. We're all, yeah, we're we're all, all empty. empty. Like, yeah. like, where are our favorite authors going to be? <laughs> it's empty <laughs> like my soul. No. And like I feel. Yeah. I And I post it everywhere. Like I'm kind of on social media a lot. Cool. Yeah, because I know that people out there are going to want to hunt you down when you get an event. They're going to find you. No, I'm the worst. I'm so, I'm like very awkward. I mean, this is fine. Like we've been talking and I talk too much, but like that's, well, that's all a good thing. thing. We like, all I'm, we're okay. I'm, we, I'm such a nervous person in go. front of people. We got nowhere to go and nothing to do. We got nowhere to go, <laughs> nothing to do, and like we like you, so yeah. So. We've been looking forward to this all week. Like you give oh, us something to look forward to at the end yeah, of the no. week. Like, I'm really sorry about Wednesday. Like, I'm okay. Sorry. It happens. Yeah, it happens. Yeah, no, no, then, yeah, no. We're we, totally fine. We we're totally we, good. Yeah. I mean, honestly, we can talk about. Yeah, we all have shit to talk about. Like 99 percent of the time. <laughs> <laughs> And we're not like texting each other. We're like FaceTiming and shit. Like right. I'm like on the Peloton spinning and these girls are like, hey, let's video. And I'm like, what? <laughs> no. I know. No. It's so funny. We do our coffee chats, but then we talk behind the scenes as well. I mean, people would probably be shocked with how much we communicate. <laughs> no, oh I God. think it's good. I have people we know a lot like, about each other's lives. Like, yeah. Right? Yeah. I I think that's really important. And you have this that like brings you together. But I have I have two people, I have three people that like I would get way more done if we weren't in each other's lives because <laughs> we okay. talk all the time. Like we talk when we wake up and we talk about work. You two of them are right, three of them yeah. are writers, you know, two of them are professional writers, but we just right. talk we just talk all the time. We text and they interrupt me and I interrupt them and like, you know what I mean? And, and then we talk after work and then we talk while my husband's talking at me and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think that's really good. I think that's good to have those. You need that for your sanity. Cause I yeah. mean, we're all stuck inside. So like to have these little things to be able to communicate with other people, that is a big thing. I feel like yeah. that helpful for like people to cope with being stuck inside for 365 oh, yeah. days. Totally. I would like to say that that's only a COVID thing, but it's been that way for several years. So. But you know, but still, I mean, this is still fun too. This is yeah, awesome. Like no, just hanging really out. Fun. Like, I mean, cause really we couldn't hang out. We're all in different States. So we, yeah. this is the only way we could hang out anyway. Yeah. So, um, we would have never met if it wasn't for these platforms, right? Like right. if we didn't have Instagram, we didn't have zoom, how would we have met? And it, I think it's, oh, we're, mm-hmm. I mean, we're in a shitty situation, but like, we're all still in our, in our own homes. Safe, right. mm-hmm. Home. Mm-hmm. Like, I could be naked from the waist down. And you guys would have no idea. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What is it? Like <laughs> is it on top party on the bottom? They're not. No. <laughs> so, Kerrigan, so your schedule for tomorrow, I know I wanted to throw it out there. I know you're going to Jessica's channel tomorrow, right? So yes. people can see you again. Mm-hmm. We'll see. Is, is that on her Instagram? Uh, that's a really good question. <laughs> oh, okay. 
Yeah, I just kind of wait for the links to yes. show up and I click them. I don't know where I am most of the time. Yes. <laughs> like, yes. I, yes. I think it's yes. Right. Yeah. Because so I know. I'm really sorry, Jessica, that I am not plugging this very well. But I will, sure. no, that's okay. so I will make sure everybody, everybody knows. We usually right. kind of you want to put your schedule out there. there. Yeah. So. Yeah. Very, very sorry. How people love you will find you. Like, we want to just make sure. Because she's doing that HR readathon, which is perfect for us because we're starting your book. So I'm like, eh, we're already there. We've got I you. I think it is, like, now that I think about, I think it is Instagram Live. I, I believe in our conversation. She said, will you do an IG Live with me? And I was like, sure. So I do want to say that probably, yes. Yeah. Right. And we'll share that information. We'll confirm it. We'll okay. share it. Yeah. You'll we'll see that in our Remember talking to me? Like, we're here. <laughs> we like, I'm trying to lose that girl over there. <laughs> Never. <laughs> you guys will be there hanging out tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, you won't, you won't see our faces. We'll just imagine. Yeah. We'll yeah, you can give us a little hand wave. You could be like, okay. Hey, okay. <laughs> what is the great thing that I really love about means, the like, community? You have your group that you're specifically in, like, what is the group called? Romance Book Squad. Romance Book Squad. Right. Romance Book Squad. Okay. Yep. Yeah. And then when we make our secret like handshake, it's gonna be dirty. It's gonna be a little okay. dirty. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, I'm gonna go PG. Chris is thinking XX. Can someone <laughs> and yes, Tori, I agree with you. I love this book community because one of the things I really love about the romance community <laughs> specifically is that we all support each other. There's a lot of romance book groups that have popped up for this year, mm -hmm. but we support each other. We watch everybody's video, we share the information, we hype mm -hmm. everybody up. Uh, because we're just we're excited that romance is just is getting out there. More people are mm -hmm. looking at this you know, a, a genre in itself instead of always trashing it or making fun of it. So right. mm -hmm. yeah, we, we will get the info out to everybody. We love it. Yeah. That's yeah awesome. And this is the thing too, is I feel like Jessica kind of started the pioneering of this genre with a few other bigger booktubers. And I feel like it's nice that we're kind of like coming in, supporting her, her endeavor of like, pumping up the romance genre because I feel like it needs as much support as it can get because I feel like there's times where people it's really easy to put down this genre so I feel like the more support it has the more likely more people will give it a chance and read it totally here <laughs> right or absolutely. If you're not reading yeah. romance, put it somewhere on your TBR. <laughs> well and I also feel like if you're not reading romance you probably actually are like right. I, you don't even realize it. in uh, so many of the genres and there's so much romance everywhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and that people just don't like, I've read sex scenes in sci-fi or thrillers that I'm like, Oh, okay. You know, <laughs> that even, that are even like, I don't even think I'd be able to get away with that in romance, right. you know, cause maybe it's not as positive or whatever, but mm -hmm. like people are people, are, romance is a part of the story. Yeah, right. the story. yeah. So, I mean, it's, I think it's probably one of the biggest chapters in people's life is when they uh, fall in love. I think, you know, yeah. and, and that leads to what? That leads to kids and it leads to marriage. But I think romance, right. like, that's like the epitome of what we all like, you know, Freud, you know, your different levels of what you have to re right. reach. And, um, yeah, I think and that's like every. Sorry to cut you off, Chris. And every story needs like needs happiness and sadness. Like you can't have just sad or melancholy. You need some sort of happiness. And most people relate happiness to love and to to kindness and to like all these all these genres that are mm -hmm. the romance genre of like yeah, yeah. the story kind of reach its peak. Right. So, and I think it too is like oftentimes something that's missing from real life, whether you're with someone or not. Like romance, it, especially the falling in love part, doesn't last for very long. And so even yeah. if you find someone that's like your partner forever and that kind of thing, like reading stories about that really intense firsts and all of that, like, and the fantasy of what you might 
never have again. Even mm -hmm. like say you're in a committed relationship and you've been in a wonderful committed relationship for 20 years. Well, then you're never going to have a first kiss again. You're never going to have a first like sex again, you know, or, or yeah. the, that moment where you realize you're in love. So like go and revisiting that in lots of different ways, I think is, is so such a positive thing to do, mm -hmm. you know, even if you're happy or even if you're lonely or even whatever, you know, like, I just think yeah. it's, it's necessary. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Right, right. right. So, thank you so much. Thank you for coming you. on with us. Thank right. you for having me. This was so Let's great. Let's go really, really fast. Um, our book starts when starts oh, yes. Sunday, tomorrow, right? Tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. tomorrow the book I, I, starts. I, so we will. Natasha and I are the Discord biatches, and we will. <laughs> we'll right. We will. We will so, open the chat uh, tomorrow morning. Right, right, right. And so you guys can get started on the books. We know no spoilers to begin with. And then uh, what chapter do they go to for Wednesday? Do we know that? Oh, God, that's such a good question. We're going to the <laughs> middle of the book. Do you know what chapter Wait. is in the middle of the book? <laughs> chapter 14. Oh, chapter 14. 14. Okay, so on Wednesday, on Wednesday well, up to chapter 14 12. for spoilers, guys. 12. Spoiler alert. 12. 12. 12. 12. 12. 12. 12. 12. Up to okay, 12, 12 for spoilers. And yeah, we are excited. I'm 12. excited for the reread because I freaking love it. But um, yeah, so we are very pumped to start this. And we will see Kerrigan again on March 6th on Chris's yeah. channel. Oh, come back and hang out. You ready? Yeah. 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 I'll have a, I'll have, you know, Wednesdays are supposed to be my day off. They've been the worst days. Well, we do Saturday where we're, we're, we're talking about your book and how much we I love it. I don't think I can handle that. You guys are going to make me my head so big. I'm going to have to like turn sideways. I'm <laughs> okay with that. That's okay. That's, That's not okay. <laughs> I'm going to get right. my hair petted. Like, can you just love me? Thank you. I just want to say real quick, Carrigan, thank you for being so open yeah. and honest and transparent mm -hmm. and sharing parts mm -hmm. of your story and your um pass with us that you didn't have to today. We right. appreciate that. And it also makes you like more, um, mm -hmm. you know, human to us, like not just like, yeah. so I want to say thank you. Oh, yeah, thank you. You're, you're, you're badass just from drinking that whiskey too. Like that oh, to me was like <laughs> money all the way. I'm just yeah, like, okay. I'm back in my life. Like I just got over an ulcer. So I'm like, I didn't drink for a really long time. And now I'm like, I miss you whiskey. <laughs> right. Like, you just, okay. So next time you come on, if you become cooler, it's like literally you've just hit like the top here. So like, okay. literally it. It's all downhill from here. I promise. <laughs> That's okay. We'll yeah. ride you here with you. Okay. Yeah. So, anyways, thank you guys. I have so much guys fun. for coming thank on. You. Bye. See you guys on Sunday. We'll talk thank soon. You so much. Bye, guys. <laughs>